committee. We have our BA, Mr. Dowd. Good evening. Good evening, sir. How are you? Doing well. All right. And we are live, correct, Apu? Correct. Okay. Um, it is 7.01, and I would like to call this meeting to order. This meeting is being held in accordance with the public laws of 1975, Chapter 231. An adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by a notice sent to the Star Ledger, the local source, and posted in the main lobby of the municipal building and on the township website. We have Dave Penna from uh, the American Legion 228 uh, that will lead us in the flag salute. Mr. Penna. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I now respectfully ask for a moment of silence for all those who serve our country both near and not so near. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mayor Capadis. Here. Deputy Mayor Weber. Here. Here. Woman Du Bois. Here. Committee Min Huber. Here. Committee Min Kaiser. Present. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, just a few announcements. Uh, yesterday was obviously Memorial Day. I would just like to take the time to thank Jerry Casimar, Linda Donnelly, and Jerry Gerbauer for organizing yet again another fine Memorial Day uh, program. Obviously, it was a little different this year, but I was happy that they were able to get it together and uh, it went off without a hitch. And I appreciate, as always, their time and effort into a wonderful program that was both very solemn and appropriate. Um, just want to remind everybody, starting uh, today, uh, starting today, uh, twice a week garbage collection is back. So if you get your garbage collected on Friday, you're now Tuesday and Friday. If you get your garbage collected on Thursday, you're now Monday and Thursday. And recycling will may remain the same for everybody. That's going to be every Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, we're still running Springfield Helping Seniors, the emergency gro grocery shopping and pick up prescriptions. Call 973-912-2227. Again, that's 973-912-2227. Or email recreation at springfield-newjersey.us. Again, that's recreation at springfield-newjersey.us. The township extends its condolences to the family of Charles H. Newman, 63 of Cranford, who passed away on May 13, 2020. Charlie was the former chairman of the Union Advisory Board for the Disabled and for 20 years served as the president of New Jersey Connect Incorporated. And during his tenure, the organization was instrumental in developing apartment units in Springfield. For instance, the Freeman Apartments on Hillside Avenue, Linden, and Plainfield. Uh, that includes my announcements it's time for reports first up is Wait, the administrator's chris, report chris you missed sure. one you missed one proclamation i did mental i'm sorry health awareness. mental health awareness month mental health awareness month you want me to do it? i have it i don't know I if do you printed it that. would you mind no, absolutely no that's why i showed up today no i'm just kidding there you um, go <laughs> Whereas mental health is essential to everyone's overall health and well-being, and whereas all Americans experience times of difficulty and stress in their lives, whereas prevention is an effective way to reduce the burden of mental health conditions, whereas there is strong research that diet, exercise, sleep, and stress management can help Americans protect their health and well-being, whereas with effective treatment, those individuals with mental health conditions can recover and lead full and productive lives, Whereas each business, school, government agency, healthcare provider, and organization and citizen shares the burden of mental health problems and has a responsibility to promote mental wellness and supportive prevention efforts. Um, now, I, Chris Capitis, Mayor of Township of Springfield, on behalf of the Township Committee, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2020 as Mental Health Awareness Month 
and call upon the citizens, government agencies, public and private institutions, businesses and schools in the township to recommit our community to increasing awareness and understanding of mental health. And I just wanna to add to that, that um, obviously we have the Stigma Free Initiative here in town, which focuses on mental health. And I know the folks that are involved with it and I really know that moving forward, it's gonna be a big issue for the country and a big issue for Springfield. And if people are looking for some information or some resources, they can check out the Stigma Free Springfield Facebook page. If they wanna get involved, they can reach out to any one of the committee members, they can reach out to the mayor, you can reach out to Linda Donnelly, anybody out here and they will get you hooked up with us so you can help. I know in the coming months as things start to reopen, this is gonna be a, a long-standing issue we're gonna to have to face together as a community. So it's definitely um, important to acknowledge this month, but not just this month, moving forward, we have to think about it as well. Thank you very much, Erica, I appreciate it. Um, also another announcement as I have the revised agenda, uh, we got word from the county, uh, the Union County today, uh, and I will just uh, read the email as we received it. Please be informed that due to COVID-19 protocols, Independence Day fireworks scheduled to take place in Union County parks will be canceled for this year. This includes the following sites, uh, which includes Springfield fireworks, which takes place on Mizell Park on July 4th. Uh, so as per the event manager of the Union County Department of Parks and Recreation, um, unfortunately, our 4th of July fireworks um, have been canceled for this year. Um, I'm just looking at the new agenda. Please forgive me for one second. Um, yes, I believe I covered all the announcements and proclamations. Again, thank you to Committee Woman Du Bois, and rightfully so. She's reading the proclamation because I know that is something that um, she is certainly an advocate for, and we appreciate that. Uh, with that, now we'll try take two. I will turn it over to reports and the administrator's report. Mr. Vesicolo, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Hey, a few, few updates, if I may. Uh, we did reopen Town Hall for employees today, so we are all back in the offices. Uh, the public can come in one at a time. They have to make an appointment, and they will be given a scheduled time to be allowed to come into the building. Uh, that can be done either by calling Linda, Mary Ellen, or the department head that you have to go see. Update on our developments going on. Uh, on the 9th, don't forget, for Gomes and Sachs, we're going to finish the redevelopment and the pilot agreement. Uh, Matt Jessup and Dennis Enright will be available to answer any and all questions. Uh, the Gomes project, where we are right now, is that they have to get the asbestos cleaned up in the two back homes They've been notified that, you know, we are, uh, we are waiting the reports that that is done and done properly. Um, the sidewalk, he's got the Jersey barriers in place. He has not opened the sidewalk yet. I have to get a hold of Mr. Jacinto and ask him where he is. The Larkin building, I think, as everybody's seen, the foundation is done. He's backfilling. He's moving along fairly well. The Sachs property has now been determined. It has to go before the Board of Adjustment for a use variance to cross the right of way in Melbourne. We thought that was gonna go before the planning board. It now has to go before the board of adjustment. I spoke to Alex over there and um, also I spoke to Brett Tansman who's the attorney for Garden Homes. Uh, neither one thinks there's an issue. It's just a formality they're gonna to have to go through. So we'll keep you informed. I think they're scheduled for July to go before the board of adjustment. A couple of other things. We did get our receipt, our agreement that our flow rights were approved by Garwood and they will be available to us starting July 1st. We bought an additional 100,000 gallons. So that, that puts us up now to 4.09 gallons per day, 4.09 million gallons per day or 100,000 gallons per day. I'm sorry. Um, from our DPW, uh, you mentioned the bi-weekly that we're gonna have garbage pickup. Paving repairs were performed on the full length of Milltown Road. Larger paving projects are still being discussed. We did also get a grant for Tooker Avenue for $57,000 to pave. And we've got um, 
K and K is looking at doing the engineering on it to see we need drainage, curb work, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll get that into the schedule as soon as we can. From our, let me see what else we have. Oh, we did have a meeting with the bridge that goes over Route 78 in Milburn. Mike and I, Mike Disco and I were on a phone call for an, in excess of an hour. And quite frankly, we learned just about nothing. They discussed filling out the paperwork for the contractor. Really had nothing to do with us. So our questions were, when is it going to start? We don't know. We'll let you know when we get a date. They didn't know when it was going to end. It's October of 2022. Um, nothing else we could tell you at this point on that. When we get more information, we'll bring you up to speed. From our building department, we've got 28 Edison places doing an extensive renovation and tenant fit out in excess of $20,000 in permit fees for that one. CVS is doing the same thing, a tenant fit out and renovations. Permit fees there will be in excess of $6,000. So our building department continues to be busy and continue to roll along on a daily basis. If there are any questions, be happy to answer them. Uh, if not, as you can see, Robbie's on also from our DPW. So if anybody has any questions for DPW, we'll be happy to answer. Any questions for Mr. Basicolo? Okay, seeing none, I'm gonna move on. Uh, I'm gonna say good evening to Mr. Scalera for our update on the bid, if uh, applicable. Do you have anything for us to share about uh, what's going on in town? Uh, yeah, we had our meeting this morning and thank you, John, for the update. Um, obviously, redevelopment is uh, our, one of our key things that we're really looking forward to. So. Um, just in a capsule, I think July, anytime after July, everything should start rolling uh, in regards to redevelopment. John, John can confirm that and everything. But uh, again, we're, we're close. So uh, really excited about it. Um, so I think the whole thing is now just trying to help the businesses in uh, Springfield uh, in their marketing efforts and what we can do to help them. So right now we're going back to the, uh, the, gift, the gift card uh, program where we subsidize $10 out of a $25 gift card. So when people go in, they pay $15 to bid. We'll pay the extra, uh, the extra $10 for gift cards for the local eateries. So what's really important is that anybody who's on this page, um, really go to the Springfield Bid New Jersey Facebook page. That's where everything is happening. Um, so uh, we have a, a landing page now, which is really fantastic. You probably have 45 plus businesses on there on our landing page. So when you go on it, you click on it, you will get all the businesses in Springfield. And then when you click on it, it tells you exactly whether an eatery, a professional company, uh, when their opening hours are, um, um, if they're uh, they're doing a street uh, deliveries or uh, you know Uber Eats or whatever the case may be. So um, it's really great. We're really pushing everybody to go on the Springfield Bid New Jersey Facebook page from a social media standpoint. Um, that's where everything is posted on what the bid is doing. Uh, we discussed this morning on, on a lighter side, uh, we just had all the streetscape done. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna use locations, TD Pizza, uh, those locations, uh, um, Tom's Pizza, and also Choppies, where we had the flower pots all planted. So we, uh, we approved all the, 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 you know, having the flower pots all done and watered in, until November. So we have a landscaping company doing that to beautify the area and make them uh, very, um, you know, nice to go to. So when you're sitting there, when we do have that uh, um, that availability to go. Um, we're doing grants. We discussed on de in detail in regards to setting aside money for grants for the businesses. Um, so hopefully we'll have X amount of dollars and we'll have applications that businesses can apply for and we'll have grant money, you know, up to, I'm gonna say right now up to $1,500. So if they need their, uh, their place cleaned, uh, by, um, by a professional company, if they need new menus, if they need um, outside uh, advertising. So the grant money is gonna go specifically for them to get going once they are reopened. Um, and again, the gift card program, the grants, I'm just going by what my notes are here. Uh, oh, well, we were, John was talking about uh, having, uh, getting the approvals for uh, uh, doing uh, eating outside in the parking lots and or uh, on the sidewalks. Uh, John, you may want to discuss a little bit about that. And again, the ordinance uh, getting it done for up to November. So again, anything else, anything else we can do just to get them you know, out and uh, 
you know, getting them uh, back in back to where they were. So that's really all I have. But again, we had that uh, go to the Springfield bid New Jersey page. Everything that we're doing is going on there. We have over 2,900 uh, people there. I'm making the assumption that 90% of them are Springfield residents. So everything the bid is doing and going on is, is going down on that page. But again, the landing page is big and the grant money that we're trying to create, which should be done within the next week or two, um, the grant money that they can apply for to use specifically for COVID or getting themselves, uh, you know, uh, reopened. That's my report. Right. Thank you very much, Mike. Any any questions for Mr. Scalera from anyone from the Township Committee? Nope. All right, seeing none, moving on to finance. Do I have a motion? I would like to make a motion to accept the total amount of payroll and invoices from the period of May 13th through May 26, 2020 in the amount of $8,322,181.25. I will second that. Roll call, please. Committeeman Kaiser. Yes. Deputy Mayor Weber. Yes. Committee woman Du Bois. Yes. Committee Min Huber. I think Rick. we might have lost them. He's coming back on right now. Okay. Okay. Committee Min Huber. Uh, might be on mute. No, he's not up. He he dropped yeah. a second. He was with us the entire time and he just dropped. Do you want me to wait for him or um we can come back to it when he gets up. Oh, uh here he is. Okay. Sorry, yes. I was there, heard it. it okay. It. <laughs> All right. Mayor, Mayor you don't Cap want me here, I understand. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you very, very much. Um, now I would like to open up the meeting for comments from the public on agenda items only. Comments from the public on agenda items only. If anyone wishes to speak on any of the agenda items, uh, please let us know through the Zoom platform. Okay. Seeing none, I'm going to close the public portion of the meeting on agenda items only and move on to minutes and reports. Do I have a motion, please? I move to adopt the regular and executive meeting minutes of April 14th, 2020 as emailed. I will second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, that's it. Okay, we're moving on to new business. We have two ordinances for uh, second reading and three uh, and none for first. So, Madam Clerk, can you read ordinance 2020-11 by title, please? Ordinance 2020-11. This ordinance amends the township code to supplement the land use provisions to include provisions regarding pipelines. Mr. Mayor, as read by Pat, uh, Madam Clerk, 2020-11, uh, being a publication of local source, June 4th, 2020. Um, Second. 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 At this time, I'd like to open up this ordinance for public comment. Anyone wishing to comment on this ordinance? Um, acknowledged through the participant Zoom portal. Okay, seeing none, I'm going to close the public comment portion of Ordinance 2020-11. Any discussion amongst the Township Committee people? No. No, no I think we discussed this in length, in length the last meeting or two meetings ago, and this is obviously long overdue. Um, so with that, roll call, please. Committeeman Huber? Yes. Committeeman Kaiser? Yes. Committeewoman Du Bois? Yes. Deputy Mayor Weber? Yes. Mayor Capitis? Yes. 
Madam Clerk, can you read Ordinance 2012 by title, please? Yes, uh, 2012, this ordinance is to establish Cap Bank for the year 2020, pursuant to NJSA 48 colon 4-45.14. I would like to make a motion to adopt Ordinance 2020-12 as read by Madam Clerk and with public with public publication in the local source on June 4th, 2020. I will second that motion. Thank you. I now open up the uh, meeting for public comment regarding ordinance 2012. Anyone from the public wishing to comment? Um, we have Miss Jones. Actually, no, that was for 202011. Thank you very much, Ms. Jones. At this time, I'm going to hold on. Okay, I am going to close the public comment portion of Ordinance 202012, seeing no comments and any discussion up here amongst the committee people. No. 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 All right. Uh, can I have a roll call, please? Yes, Committee Min Kaiser. Yes. Deputy Mayor Weber. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Committee Min Huber. Yes. Mayor Capades. Yes. Okay. All right. We have the following resolutions for you. I would like to uh, approve them by a consent agenda. Um, if you have anything you would like me to pull, uh, please make note as I call the number. 202163. 202164, I would like to pull. 202165. 202166. 202167. 202168. 2021-69 and 2021-70. Do I have a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to adopt resolutions 2020-163, one, we one 164, 165, 166, 167, 68, 69, and 70. I second. Wait a minute, you pulled, you pulled one, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we pulled, we pulled 164. 64. Oh, roll call on uh, the motions by consent. Deputy Mayor Weber? Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois? Yes. Committee Min Huber? Yes. Committee Min Kaiser? Yes. Mayor Capades? Yes. Okay. Madam Clerk, please read resolution 2021 64. This resolution promotes Lawrence Chan from ninth class firefighter to eighth class firefighter. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to pull this. I wanted to take a, a take a take a moment. Um, just you know, we talked about all first responders and and all of our first responders, especially during this uh, COVID nineteen pandemic. Um, I remember when Firefighter Chan was sworn in as a firefighter in Springfield. Um, I have done several ride alongs with Firefighter Chan. Um, he has certainly groomed himself to be an outstanding member of our fire department. Um, as I said, I went on a couple of ride-alongs with him, been involved in some trainings with him. I'm just really happy uh, for him and uh, his family and his progress here in Springfield. And when you talk about, you know, Springfield firefighter, this is certainly the caliber person we would like to see here in Springfield. And I just want to congratulate uh, Firefighter Chan, along with all the other uh, positions that we're promoting this evening. All right, I make a motion to adopt resolution 2020 164. I second. Deputy Mayor Weber. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Committee Min Huber. Yes. Committee Min Kaiser. Yes. Mayor Capades. Yes. Um, for discussion and action items, I have a, just a couple of, again, a couple of quick thank yous. I know I've done this in the beginning, but I think it goes without saying. I'd like to thank again, Paul Mullick and Joe Voorhees 
uh, both township employees for Springfield, um, especially for the meetings that we have here, um, just coordinating it all. You're seeing the meeting on Zoom, Facebook Live, our television channel, YouTube. And not only are they doing this for this, but now that we are in the Zoom world with this pandemic, they've been really coordinating all of our meetings uh, that you see on Zoom, and broadcast on Facebook Live and all of our other entities. So I just want to give a quick, you know, very much a thank you to Apu and Joe for all their hard work and all that they continue to do every day for our township. And, and just another side note um, for our DPW, Rob Betcher. I was informed uh, early this morning um, that there was an issue that somebody had on uh, yesterday during Memorial Day that their sewer line was backed up. And, uh, you know, Mr. Betcher went out there himself on Memorial Day to, uh, you know, remediate the problem and get the problem solved. And that is just the epitome of the customer service, I think, that we at the Township Committee has always talked highly of. Um, it, it, it goes from the top down, and uh, we certainly appreciate Mr. Betcher's efforts, along with all of our other supervisors uh, and the daily tasks that they do. Uh, and that's something that, you know, Mr. Betcher will never talk about and never, you know, never tell anybody. But I think that's why it's important that we recognize, you know, just a little small little thing that he did um, that really goes a long way, especially on Memorial Day and uh, the customer service. And I'm certainly sure it helped out the residents. So just a couple of thank yous all around. Um, does anyone have any other discussion or action items before I move on? Yes, I have something. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, I know I've been chewing all your ears off one at a time on this and uh, been trying to kick this around for a while. You know, we all know what's happening with, with Temple Sherry. And um, I would like the township to, I, I'd like us to, to go a little forward with um, possibly investigating moving the police department and EMS over to the Sherry building. Um, now, I do want to make clear that any deal, I, I don't know what's going on with Shari right now. You know, I'm not sure what they have pending or anything, but you know, any deal that allows them to stay in business would for me take precedence over anything that the township could, you know, would, would get into at that point. So, so I would not want to interfere in anything they have that allows them to stay, you know, a temple and, and, and keep them in business. But, if that doesn't become the case and it goes a little further, um, you know, the way I'm looking at it right now, and I, I think we should look at it a little further, if the building could be retrofitted to hold the police department and EMS, it would um, give the police department and EMS updated facilities that are, you know, with modern technology, and, 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 you know, advancements in, in terms of um, materials and, and uh, communications and everything else that we could have there. It would be in the center of town. It, you know, it, it's right next to FMG and, and St. James and Temple Israel and the Chisholm Center. And, you, you know, it, it's right there, right kind of where we'd want it to be. Um, ties into Veterans Park. You know, it, it gives us two thirds of that entire block at that point and allows, you know, parking for veterans park and, and, um, you know, it's just a nice tie in with that park to have the police station and EMS tied into there. It frees up the annex. It frees up the EMS building and the parking lot where the police cars are currently parked right now. It, it would allow, you know, with some updating to town hall, it would allow the annex to, uh, go into town hall and we could all be under one building as far as administration is concerned. Um, so I, I want us to start going forward with this and, and looking at, and, and getting some quotes and seeing if this is even feasible to, to retrofit a building like that, or if it's something that has to be, you know, knocked down and stick built. I don't know, but, uh, I, I think that, uh, it's something we need to start pursuing now before it gets too late. You, you don't get an opportunity to, to buy a piece of land like that very often. And I, I'd rather do my homework on it now 
then kick ourselves in a few years and say that, hey, we should have probably looked into that. Chris, with your comments, I would just like to share that I am for anything that would improve the customer service that we provide to our residents. Uh, with that being said, I know this comes out of an expense. I know that this particular idea and item has a lot of layers to it, uh, for sure. And it's just in conversation stage. But I am certainly willing to explore and look at any plan that you think or anyone thinks that would improve our customer service and uh, provide better service to our residents by more centrally locating and making our services more efficient. So with that being said, I would, I would be very interested in discussing any plans that surround those ideas. Wonderful, thank you. Does anyone else have anything they wish to share? Uh, under discussion can I, and action. Can I just say one thing? Um, oh. Earlier in the meeting, you you talked about the um, shopping for seniors for groceries mm -hmm. and for uh, prescriptions. I just wanted to add to that that if anyone is, it is still a necessary service at this time, and I know it's getting nicer out and people are starting to move about a little bit more, so they might forget that there are still people that do need our help. If you can help with this initiative you can reach out to help spf seniors at gmail.com and we can add you to the list of volunteers and it's super easy there's no real commitment to it people reach out when they need help you just get an email if you're available to help you just volunteer to help and then you just go do the shopping if you're not available nobody even knows that you're not there's a pool of volunteers who i'm really grateful for that have been helping but it never hurts to have more. So if anybody would like to help, again, it's help spfseniors at gmail.com, or you can reach out to Adam or myself and we can get you on the um, list. And we would appreciate, as people become a little more comfortable going out, if you're running to ShopRite already and you could just grab somebody's stuff for them that, that's in need, you know, they'll, they'll pay you. It's not, you know, you're not purchasing it for that. You're, you're only shopping for them. They're paying for their own stuff. So if you're already heading to the store, it's easy to just help somebody who may not be able to get out right now. That's it. Thank you. Anyone else? Alex, did you have something you wanted to say? Yeah, just just real quickly. I, I remember you wrote to the... Uh... Uh, you froze, Alex. Incorporate that into a resolution. Hold on, um, I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can you start again? Cause you kind of froze uh, in the middle of that. Can you just start out again? Can you, can you hear me? Yes, now oh, I can. Yeah, oh, no, no, no problem. The, the you just froze and I wanted to make doing. sure that everybody heard what you had to say. Yeah, no, I, Mayor, you wrote to, uh, I know you penned a letter along with, uh, I, I believe all the mayors of Union County pretty much to the congressional delegation asking, uh, for direct federal assistance in this time. Uh, now that there's there's both formal bill in both the, the Senate and the House, I, I think maybe we should, for next time, work on, and, and I'll certainly work with the administration in writing, but a resolution expressed from all of us uh, that we would like to see that uh, a, a desire. Um, I know you had the opportunity, I think it's good that maybe we show it as a, as a body and maybe in anticipation of next meeting, I'll, I'll certainly work with uh, uh, Mr. Dowd and, and Ms. Donnelly to draft something up. Yes, I agree. I, I think that would be a wonderful show of support. Absolutely, and I, and I know that um, Congressman Malinowski's office would be would appreciate it. And, and like I said, anything that we can do for our residents, if, we're, if it's under our power, we'd like to do it. So absolutely, I have no problem with that. We should put it on the next, next meeting for, for consideration on the agenda. Absolutely, thank you. That's all. Anyone else? Okay, moving on to correspondence. Uh, we have one summit regarding Ordinance 23211 regarding development of regulations, zoning regulations, planned research office, development zones. I would just like that to uh, be received and filed. And with that, at this time, I'd like to make the motion 
uh, sorry, not make the motion, but open up the meeting for public comment on any governmental issue, um, reminding the public that they will have three minutes to speak. Um, we are going to go, uh, obviously, through the Zoom format that we've been going on. Uh, those of you who've been watching live, I have been putting up the instructions every so often. Also, we develop, we advertised how you could participate in the public portion uh, on our Facebook page and website uh, preceding the meeting. Okay, I have uh, Wendy Apu, please. Uh, I'm unmuted, I suppose. You can hear me? Yes. Yes. Please yeah. state your name and address for the record, please. Yes, Wendy Jones, 158 Milltown Road. Um, I would like to give my thanks for the 2020 11 um, ordinance that was passed um, to the CACP uh, volunteers, to Food and Water Watch, to Ken Dulski, an activist connected with Food and Water Watch who helped us and sent templates of the um, of the various uh, ordinances in other other towns. Ali Miller, a Springfield or, um, uh, activist, uh, the 89 townspeople that uh, signed the petitions that we uh, we went door to door and then they signed those petitions. We thank you, Mr. Patel of Welch Farms, who let us uh, set up a table for people to sign petitions. Um, uh, when we were, um, you know, getting uh, signatures, and the Springfield Township Committee for the unanimous vote. We've been working on this since 2014. So after six years, this was passed, and I thank you all. And I thank you, Miss Jones, for your advocacy. We're sorry it took so long, but um, I think I could speak for everybody up here when I say that we all wanted to get this done, and we're happy that it is done, and uh, we appreciate your participating. Uh, in the in the meeting and 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 obviously displaying your advocacy for something that you're so passionate about. So we do appreciate it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Uh, moving on. We have Apu. Jerry is next. Hello. Hi. Can you please state your name and address for the record, please? Jerry Fernandez, 393 Hillside Avenue. Just, um, I know you mentioned the flow rights that we received in the in the, our business administrator's report. What, yes. what are the costs for for uh, the flow rights? What have, what have we spent this year? I don't have those numbers off the top of my head, Mr. Basicolo. Do you? Yes, it was a dollar fifty a gallon to buy the additional flow rights, which came to a total of. Let me see what we want. Hold on one second. I just got to find a letter. I think it was 150 grand total is what we paid for them this year. Is uh any of with all the with the redevelopment, it's part of that. Are they going to share some of the cost in, in the additional flow rights for their projects? There is now a connection fee for each unit, and that money will be set aside if we need to buy more flow rights. Okay. And um I know we you talked about the buildings. Anything new with Sarah Bailey? No. No. Okay. And um, just speaking with one of my neighbors here, who's, uh, I guess, in the medical field, one of the concerns, I don't know, is do you guys have any timeline on the senior bus um, coming back? I, I, I think there's some concern about seniors that may need to go to the doctor and, and we're afraid to go um, because of, of the virus. But other illnesses that they're not treating may cause them serious issues as well. And they may not have rides there. I don't know if Eric, if you can tie that in with what you're doing um, with the shopping, but I, I think it might be a concern that you want to look at. We could talk to Mike Fitzpatrick in regards to that. And I guess, Adam, I don't know the answer to your question, but that is a good question. So I guess John or I could talk to Adam in regards to that. That, that's, that is a good question to bring to our attention. Thank you. Yeah, I think some of them are afraid or don't have rides either to go to the doctors. Probably. It took one or two on your own, you know, in a, in a, on the bus. Or, you know, I'm talking small, you know, one as not a large amount of people, obviously, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, something in that issue. And and then the last thing I, I reached out, I talked to Adam. I know um, there was a, a neighboring town that had tied up all the tennis uh, courts for like lessons. And I could have swore that we had something in the past to prevent that, you know, being taken away from residents. I think Adam was on it, but just to give you guys a head up that uh, 
it's one of the only sports I guess people can play in the parks around here. And uh, we just got to be keep an eye on uh, some of those schools or classes coming in and taking them all. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate it. And you're right. We'll, we'll keep an eye out. And if, again, I think our residents have been pretty, um, pretty stealthy about seeing something at a park that's not quite right. They've been calling the police and, and we've been sending our patrol cars by and, you know, telling them to disperse if they're acting inappropriately. But no, I appreciate that. And certainly I'd advise anybody who is not seeing anything regarding lessons or anything else, social distancing that's not being done. I appreciate, you know, calling the police and just letting them know. And again, we're not going on to park and we're not arresting anybody. We're just going to go check in, remind people that, you know, they need to social distance and just remind people of the rules and we'll get all yeah. we'll get this together. Chris, I think, I think that part was okay. It's just that they tie it all up and the residents couldn't play. Like I couldn't play with my son. You know, I, I think the social distancing thing is okay. But one real quick question, the Mizell field, the track and is closed, right? And the turf, I, uh, is, are there any plans on opening that up that you know from the county? I, actually, I was I was speaking with one of the freeholders a couple of days ago. There is no plans to open that up. I think the concern was the turf field itself, not so much the track, but the to protect the turf field. And there is no plans uh, that I have heard of opening that up anytime soon. <laughs> All right, thanks. Thank you. Is that all? Yeah, that's all. I, that, I figure I'm over three minutes. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Linda didn't. Linda didn't uh, swatch you out of there, so I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna keep letting you go until Linda. I was gonna make Linda the bad person. Oh, I, yeah, listen, listen. If you want me to keep going, I can keep going, Chris. <laughs> I, I know you can, but I don't believe your three minutes are up. <laughs> He's giving me the act sign, so I got to yeah, let Chris, you go. Chris, Chris, you don't want to give me more time. <laughs> okay. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I'm done. All right. Thank you. Next, we have a poo, Miss Gilson. Hi. Hi. Could you just state Hi. your name and address? Record, yeah. Ann Gilson, 143 New Brook Lane. Good evening. Hi. Uh, Hi. I just, I don't have any questions. I just, well, I do have a question, but I'll ask it after. I just wanted to thank you all, as Wendy Jones has, uh, for passing the ordinance concerning the pipeline. We've been working on it for a long time, a lot of people involved, and we appreciate very much that you uh, passed that ordinance. And this, the question was, I, what's going on with the temple, Sherry Shalom? I don't know anything about that. Um, well, we do understand that it is um, for sale. I mean, oh. other than that, I can't, I can't speak to their business and I wouldn't right. want to, but I do understand no. it is for sale. Oh, wow. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, just looking one more time. Mm, okay, seeing no more comments from the public, I'm going to close the public comment portion of the meeting. And uh, if there's nothing further, I'd like to ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Uh, second. second. All uh, in favor? Aye. Favor? Aye. Aye. All right. This meeting opposed. is adjourned. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, no one's opposed. You, you, you're, you, listen, if you lead with the adjournment, especially you, no one's going to oppose you. Believe me. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Stay safe. Have a wonderful uh, week and uh, we'll see you soon.